Hi everyone, this is the online lecture for Elasticity. Now remember what we learned about consumer buying behavior. Cheaper things, they want to buy more. Expensive things, they buy less. Now in this topic, we go deeper into detail. Alright, to find out whether how much more or how much less do they buy. Okay, in addition to that, uh, we will use calculation to reaffirm some of the other elasticities that we have studied. For example, uh, we have studied different goods such as normal and inferior. We will use certain uh, measurements to confirm the status of uh, some of these goods. We also learned that good and good have different relationships, like they can be complement, they can be substitutes. Okay, again, we can use uh, calculation to confirm uh, what kind of relationships uh, they have. Right, let's start. Now the first type of elasticity that we will study is price elasticity. Okay. Now price elasticity we call it EP. Eh? All right. E for elasticity. P for price. Okay. Now uh, it's used to measure the responsiveness of quantity demanded of a good when there's a change in its price. Now we call it a lot of demand. Eh? Like what I said earlier, uh, when something is expensive, consumer buy lesser. When something is cheaper, they buy more. How much more or how much less is what price elasticity will tell us. Okay, how much more or how much less. So essentially, we are still following the law of demand. Okay, but we go deeper into detail to ask ourselves how much more uh, consumer will buy when the prices fall, and how much uh, less will they uh, they will buy when the prices go up. Okay. To calculate price elasticity, we use this formula. Okay. Now EP, our price elasticity, all right, we use this formula. Now, the top formula tell us what is the percentage change in quantity demanded. That means the percentage change in people buying more or less, okay? Now, the bottom, the uh, denominator part, all right, is the percentage change in price. This is our event, okay? This is recording our event. That means what is the percentage uh, that the price have changed? Okay, so the uh, denominator, all right, is our event, and this is our outcome. The numerator is our outcome. So when there's a change in price level, all right, of the good or service at the bottom, how much more or how much less do people buy? Okay, is what is measuring on top. Now you can have uh, raw data that's given to you. When raw data is given to you, the formula can be rewritten as this. Huh? Change in Q over Q divided by change in P over P. Alright. Now some of you can uh, read uh, immediately that if you change this to a times, this will be inverted. Now keep to your version that you like. Alright. Don't keep switching about. Alright. If I were you, I'll just keep to one, uh, stick to one version like this one. Change in Q over Q divided by change in P over P. Alright, now as we progress onwards uh, to look at different elasticity formula, you will notice one uh, similarity. All the elasticity formula has this on top, percentage change in quantity demanded. Okay, now depending on what type of elasticity is measuring, this event will change. So in this case, we are measuring price elasticity. The denominator will be a percentage change in price. Okay. If you are measuring what type of good is it, uh, this will be percentage change in uh, income. All right. So uh, the bottom part changes with the type of elasticities that we are talking about. But the top part where we measure percentage change in quantity demanded will always remain the same. Okay. What changes is the denominator. The numerator is always the same for all the different elasticity formulas. Okay. Similarly, for the long formula, the left part is always the same, change in Q over Q, which is essentially the numerator here. Okay, so uh, recap this uh, formula for price elastic uh, elasticity. The numerator is the percentage change in quantity demanded. All right, the denominator is percentage change in price, and it can be written as a longer uh, formula if raw data is given to you. All right. This is for raw data, raw, raw numbers given to you, and the top part is where percentage is given to you. So we use either one depending on what data is given to us. Now, after calculation, we must conclude what kind of price elasticity uh, the good has. Now, uh, there's a four possibility 
that uh, we can have perfectly inelastic, perfectly elastic, elastic and inelastic. Now, uh, just to um, familiarize yourself with the outcome, uh, elasticity is the degree of responsiveness, like a rubber band, uh, elastic. Okay, so elastic means consumer respond by a lot. All right, inelastic means consumer cannot change their buying behavior. Inelastic means it cannot be changed. Right, elastic means it can be changed. Right? Like rubber band, uh, you can pull uh, very long. Right? So the degree of responsiveness is very high for elastic. Inelastic means cannot be changed. All right? So as long as you understand the meanings of these words, it becomes easier to understand. Now what is this perfectly? Perfectly means absolutely, completely, 100%. Okay? So perfectly means 100%. Inelastic means cannot change. So 100% cannot change. All right? So the behavior cannot be changed at all, all right? Now, elastic means can change, and perfectly means can completely change, all right? So this kind of wording tell us that consumer will completely change uh, their buying when the price changes, all right? Now, when there's a perfectly something, perfectly are extreme cases, all right? Completely, absolutely. So these are extreme cases which in real life, we seldom see, okay? Now, what you will see more often is these two, elastic demand, okay? That means consumer will change a lot of their buying when prices change. Inelastic means consumer largely will not change. Not, uh, absolutely not change, huh? it will largely remain unchanged, okay? These two uh, kind of category we see more often in real life, okay? So these two are not extreme uh, measurements. They are large measurements. Largely can change, elastic, largely cannot change. All right? So in comparison, the first two are perfectly, absolutely. These are extreme cases. Okay? Now let's take a look at an extreme case. Perfectly inelastic. Perfectly means absolutely, completely. Inelastic is cannot change. Now, if you look at the diagram, you can see uh, how it's being represented. Huh? The quantity is being stuck here. Okay, that means uh, for this kind of curve, which is uh, vertical, all right, it means that no matter how much the price changes, higher or lower, higher or lower, okay, consumer cannot change the amount that they are buying. So we call this perfectly inelastic, completely cannot change. Now, in your notes, it tells you what kind of products a uh, um, consumer may react like that. Okay? Now, uh, we mentioned in the uh, previous slide uh, that this is an extreme case. Okay? So, some of the examples can be a little bit uh, rare. Okay? You don't see that often. Now, you see in your notes that some of the products that uh, have this kind of behavior patterns, that consumer exhibit this kind of behavior patterns, is those kind of very critical uh, things like medicine, all right, regardless of the price, they have to buy. If not, um, they may not be able to live. Okay, those kind of critical um, um, uh, good or service that consumer have no choice but to buy. Okay, so we call this perfectly inelastic demand. Now, next uh, extreme example that we have is perfectly elastic. All right, that means consumer will completely change their buying all right, when the price changes. So when you see this kind of uh, curve, it's now a horizontal curve. That means the consumer is only willing to buy at one price level. Once you change the price level, there'll be no more buying. Okay, now we call this kind of um, uh, elasticity infinite. So when you press in the calculator, we give some numbers, all right, you see this sign coming up, all right. Now, uh, this kind of buying uh, doesn't have an uh, actual example in real life. Okay, we will touch on this uh, case again, perfectly elastic curve, when we go to the topic of perfect competition uh, in uh, market structure. Okay, but you must understand what this curve means. Huh? That means consumer uh, uh, are only willing to buy at one price. Okay, so they buy whatever quantity at the same price, that one price. If you change the price level, they will not buy. Okay, that's what this curve means.
Now we move on to more mainstream examples. Huh? Now this is elastic demand. Elastic means the responsiveness is high. So consumer can change their buying okay, to a large degree. How do we see this on the diagram? Now you see here, when price fall by 10%, now going by a law of demand, things become cheaper, consumer will buy more. All right. How much more? More than 10%. That means it's more than the fall in the price. Okay. So when price fall in the percentage, okay, 10% here, consumer will buy by more than 10%. Okay, more than proportion compared to the uh, fall in price. So this is what we call by elastic. Okay, elastic demand. Alright, so the responsiveness is high. Now the reverse is true. Huh? When price go up by a little bit, consumer will buy a lot less. Okay, that is also elastic demand. Now inelastic demand is when consumers are largely not responsive. Okay, largely they don't change the amount that they buy. Still change but by a little bit. Now in this example that we have, let's say price go down by 10%, by right, a consumer should be buying more, right? Follow the law of demand, but they will buy by a little bit more, okay? So you give them a 10% discount, they'll buy by, uh, increase their buying by less than 10%. So they don't really change the amount that they buy by much. They'll change, but by a little bit, a little bit, like inelastic, okay? Largely unchanged. Still change, but by a little bit. Okay. Uh, again, the reverse is true. Huh? If the price go up by 10%, consumer will buy less, but by a little bit. Less than 10%. This is what it means. Okay. Now, the next uh, section will explain to you why do consumers behave like that. What causes uh, the demand for uh, some type of goods to be elastic or inelastic. Let's take a look.
Okay, that's all I have for you for this week. Now, so far what we have studied is uh, we have gone uh, deep into uh, consumer buying behavior. Now, from next week onwards, we'll begin to focus a little bit on the sellers. Okay, uh, how do they decide on their output, which is affected by their cost? And then we move after that to the bigger picture to look at the entire markets in terms of market structure. Alright, see you next lesson.